Okay. Now let's just say a piece of that goo came alive. How did it stay alive? How long did it live for? You know, if I don't eat every two or three hours, I start to die. Did it eat? Did it breathe? I mean, how did it stay alive? So, okay, lightning strikes goo, goo comes alive. Now what? Now it dies. Story is over. That was cool. You see? No, no. It must have come alive again and again and again and again and again. And then one day, it went from being protoplasmic mega goo to protoplasmic micro goo. It was better goo. Add a few billion years, and goo became you. <laughs> now, Steve, that's hard science. Don't make fun of it. <sighs> when I go on the Internet looking for sermon illustrations and video clips and pictures, I love seeing the art on the Internet. There's some brilliant people. See, I'm not artistic at all. So when somebody can take a piece of canvas and a few pieces of oil that are colored and do something. I watch this guy on TV, you know, the guy with the big fro? He talks real soft. Yeah, I just think we'll put a, a little burnt umber there. Oh, yeah. I think, how about a bird? I said, how do you do that and make a bird? I could spend a week trying to make a bird and it would look like burnt umber. I'm so impressed with that guy. He's just, and he's so soothing to listen to. I love what he does. Now, take a piece of his art that he does on TV in half an hour to an hour, put it up on a wall, and it's a thing of beauty. And parade a million people through there, and I guarantee you, not one of those people would look at that piece of art and say, wow, I wish I was at that paint factory when it blew up and made that picture. <laughs> Who would believe that? Nobody would believe that. But we would believe the world blew up and made the artist. You with me? Don't be so quick to give up on the Bible is what I'm saying. The Bible says everything that's wonderful and brilliant in this world was made by somebody more wonderful and more brilliant. Basically, the Bible's saying if it looks like it's complex and designed, it had a designer. In other words, the painting had a painter. Now, you religious folks, you're fanatics thinking that paintings have a painter. Yeah, excuse me. I'm funny that way. And let me tell you, you are much more beautiful than any piece of art, much more complex than anything in this universe. And there's no way I have enough faith to believe you happened by accident. God made you. God made you because he's brilliant, and he made you to be brilliant. He's awesome, and he made you awesome. Don't lower yourself to some atheistic standard that you're just advanced goo. It ain't so. It's just stupid. No offense. <laughs> so there's two types of education. There's spiritual education and there's non-spiritual education. But in the light of God's word, they both come out matching beautiful. By the way, in the very near future, I hope to do a couple of, maybe a small series on, you know, I kind of, gave you an overview of why I think scientific theory that contradicts the Bible isn't valuable. But I want to go into the real stuff. Steve, what about the dinosaurs and the Bible? What, what does that say? And, and, and what about evolution? I mean, sure, you made fun of the big picture, but what about the little picture? I'll talk about that stuff, and I'll give you some of the details and the science behind it. So that's coming in the, in the not-too-distant future. But Solomon studied plant life. From the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the walls, he taught about animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. He was a, a, a botanist and a biologist and a lecturer. He was a brilliant man of God, and he knew God personally. Until just the modern times, all the great scientists were men of God. They were just trying to understand how God did what God did and praising him for it. Education is a valuable thing, and in this country... We provide free education up through high school. We re require our children to go. It's mandatory. It's a good thing. Mandatory education is a good thing. Do you realize that in the days of Jesus, the Jewish people had mandatory education for boys and girls? 
I don't know all of world history, but I've never heard of an ancient people that far back they did that. In the days of Jesus, mandatory education for boys and girls. Now, let's look at the rest of the Roman Empire. The highest their literacy rate could have possibly been, according to the scholars, is 10%. And that is being generous. Most of them think it's probably half that. A literacy rate. So, you're a Roman person. There's millions of you. Maybe one in ten could read. Maybe. Not in Israel. 100% literacy rate. Everybody went to school. Why? Why did the Jews do that? Well, because they knew Solomon. Solomon said knowledge was important, so they pursued it. And even to this day, Jewish people are known to have a higher education than most people. They say, oh, they're Jewish people, they're people of the book. <laughs> yeah, well, sure, because God said so. And we've been following that for over 2,000 years. One educator said, education costs money, but then so does ignorance. <laughs> Both are pricey. You've got to invest in one. I'll go with the wise man. Spiritual education, also important. Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Listen to it in the contemporary version. It puts it this way. Respect and obey the Lord. This is the beginning of wisdom. To have understanding, you must know the holy God. So education of all kinds. God wants you to get educated. Some of the, bri the brightest minds on this very day are Christian people. They don't make the press because they don't want their views heard. In fact, a whole major motion picture was released about some of these people, how they're kept out of public eye and kicked out of schools and universities because of their belief in God, even though they're brilliant people. Does anybody know what movie I'm talking about? Expelled. You should see that movie. Very interesting. Jesus said to his disciples that God's word was just important to them as the food they ate. And I told you, I have to eat every couple of hours. I'm funny that way. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I don't like big meals. I just like to eat throughout the day every once in a while. I'm kind of in a transition stage right now. Used to be I liked several big meals throughout the day. <laughs> kind of like the hobbits in Lord of the Rings. Now I just like to eat a lot. How many of you like to eat? Let me see. Okay, so I'm not alone. Good. You're looking at me kind of funny. I like to eat. And if I go a few hours without food, I start to get cranky. And I get to this place in my body where I figure, uh-oh, if I don't eat and drink soon, I'm not going to be fun to be around. I start yelling at things that aren't anybody's fault, and I just get nasty. I realize, oh, I need to eat. It's time. Time to drink. God says the Bible is important to us as food. And yet we don't bring the Bible in every couple hours. We don't bring the Bible in every day. We don't bring it in every few days. A lot of us are lucky if we get it in once a week just at church because somebody else is teaching it. I want to tell you that according to Jesus himself, the Bible is just as important as food. And like with Solomon, we can believe that or not. See, when we stop eating food, we can feel the change come over us. But when we stop feeding our spirit, it's a lot slower. We don't feel the change. It starts to hurt us without us knowing it until we're in the place where some of those people were up on the screen in our worship song earlier. Their lives are broken and shattered, and they're like, how did I get here? They never felt their spirits shriveling up and dying. Jesus said, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. All right, I want to help you out. I want to give you a way to help your spiritual education. Let's look at the next slide. Visit this website. It's called BiblePlan.org awesome website. Here's what this website will do. There's a bunch of things you can click. Say, I want to read through the Bible in a year. Click it, put in your email address, it'll send you the amount you need to read every day, and you'll be done in a year. Oh, I want to read the Old Testament chronologically in a year. Check that one, then it'll send you the, it all in order, so you can follow the history of the Bible. I want to read the Old Testament in two years. Makes it easier. Great, it'll do that. It's got all these plans. You can click off which version you want. It'll send it to you in the contemporary English, in the King James, in the NIV. You pick the version, it'll send it to you in, in that version. You read it during the day, you get through the Bible in a year. It even gave me this plan, which I really liked. Monday through Friday, 
get the weekends off for good behavior. Read one chapter of the New Testament a day. That's it. And you'll finish the New Testament in a year. Bibleplan.org. Check it out. It's a great place to help nurture your spirit. 